All right, so a little change of pace for our vlog this week. Uh, I've just finished up putting together a bunch of video clips from the Pennsylvania Equine Council meeting, which I attended on Friday and Saturday of this week, and asked two questions of some of the members of that meeting. That was what you think uh, an important current issue is for the Pennsylvania horse industry. And the second question I asked was, who is your favorite horse and why? So I hope you get some information from some of the answers here. I tried to highlight what some of the topics were that came up, and I thought this was a good opportunity to get some other points of view than just mine and Andrea's for this week. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, the first question, I think my answer would be unity. No matter what we try to do in the equine industry, it seems that it takes numbers. And horse people are their own worst enemies because I ride the hunter jumper <laughs> and you ride the reining horse. And I like my thoroughbred hunter jumper better than your quarter horse and sure. there's a wall that wall needs to come down but for us to save the equine business in the state and nationally we got to work as one and then we've increased numbers and we have some clout no matter where we go I had an app stallion years ago his name was Fleet Pete and I guess why he was my favorite would be because of the heart that he had he needed two points over fences for his versatility award with the Appaloosa Horse Club. And out the road for me was a hunter jumper stable, but they had warm bloods where they had the Grand Prix horse. And I took this horse out there one day as riding him, and the gentleman owned the place was riding a big warm blood. And he was cooling him down, and the smallest fence in that pen that day was a five foot ox. And I said something to Jay as when he was talking about the stud, about needing the two points over fences, and he says, Will he jump? And I pointed to that smaller fence, said, Will he jump that? The horse has only ever been asked to jump three six, but I've seen him jump a six foot fence to go back to the barn. Once he was out so long, he wanted to go to the barn. So I didn't think anything about it. And a little bit later, after Jay cools his horse down, he comes out carrying his little saddle and says, let's me ride him. Now I'm thinking, oh man. So I pulled my saddle off and Jay got on him and he rode him around there for a few minutes. Long trotted him towards that fence while the stud was trying to pull rein. Make a long story short, I'm thinking to myself, Pete, I don't care if you crash that fence, just don't refuse it. He cleared the first five footer ticked the second rail with a hind foot and bounced it off for me doing it i'd have probably ran right through the fence but now you had a professional riding a horse with a lot of heart and he knew exactly when to ask and what to do and the stud horse all but cleared it he knocked the second rail off on the second fence and he was probably my favorite horse because of his heart a kid could handle him although you didn't do that with a stallion but that right. was his mentality but he was just just a good horse. Well, I'll start with the most pressing issue, and that is access to trails, getting people to help with that process and volunteer and do the best we can to keep them open. And who is your favorite horse and why? I would say right now it's my current horse. His name is Teddy Bear. Sounds like a very small, fuzzy horse. He's a gigantic, big black horse. He's a Kentucky Mountain Spotted Saddle Horse Cross. No, no spots on him. He's one of many that I've raised from a colt, and he's not the perfect horse, but he's got a lot of really good qualities. He's seven, and I'm hoping at eight or nine he will become the perfect horse. Thank you, Judy. You're welcome. All right, so we've got Sam Kiefer with us today. What was your favorite horse and why? He was an 18-year-old quarter horse when I got him. His okay. name was Reggie Chestnut. Gorgeous horse, uh, mm -hmm. one of the the, uh, the friendliest horses I've ever met. Had him till till he was about 25. At that point, I, would, I was uh, off into college, and you know he he went his way, I went mine. Thoroughly enjoyed um, Reggie. Uh -huh. Wonderful horse. In my view, one of the most important issues facing the equine industry and horse owners in Pennsylvania is probably along the lines of the additional regulatory scrutiny that, that is being placed on farms in general. And the regulators see, see the approach that the owner of one horse needs to take to be the same as the owner of 50 horses. And uh, we're talking about manure management plans, documentation thereof, making sure that there's enough acreage to take care of the, the manure that the, <laughs> that the animals um, do indeed generate. There is a lot of paperwork that needs to it needs to be taken care of and documented. We in agriculture, many of us, you know, are, are, are in it for one reason, and one of those reasons is probably not maintaining records and, paperwork, and, right. and doing paperwork. The most pressing issue to me is the health, welfare, and the continuing education for horse owners and people who want to own horses. My most favorite horse was yeah. a Morgan mare that I bought as a four-year-old, had not had much done with her. I worked with her because I had been changing horses through my 
husband that I had then, and he kept selling the ones that I would fix and getting different ones and giving me these new ones. <laughs> the Morgan Mary I got, nobody else could ride. I rode her with a halter and a lead rope, bareback, for years and years and years. She accepted kids, she did not accept adults, other than myself and one other person. And halter and lead rope, it didn't make a difference where you were riding, trails, creeks, roads. Yeah. She went very well, and that was my probably most favorite horse. What was her name? Melody. Melody. Mellow Mist Melody. I think horsemen as a whole are too independent, and I don't think they see the big overall picture, and they won't come together and act as one big voice. And I, I think it really hurts, because if you look at uh, particularly user groups and the trail issues, that you don't have the numbers, and numbers speaks. My favorite horse would be my present one. I broke him as a two-year-old. He's now 26. We were still riding the mountain trails at uh, four or five hours, team penned on him, I've done sorting, I've roped off him, he's been honest, dependable. What's his name? Roni. He's a Roan quarter horse. Okay, I'll go with the most pressing issue. I think that is the unwanted horse. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many horses that are being turned loose and just to fend for themselves and the slaughter issue, which is an unpopular emotional issue, is one that needs to be addressed. There's still just as many horses going to slaughter as there ever were because they're unwanted, but they're just going to the wrong place. They're not right. staying in the United States. They're going to Canada and Mexico and I that really breaks my heart. My favorite horse was my big old red solid colored Appaloosa gelding named Mikey. I got him as a three-year-old, took him to, to Kentucky as a three-year-old on a, tra a week-long trail ride uh -huh. and the first two days he spent mostly on his knees stumbling around uh -huh. and by Friday I could see him making decisions and he turned out to be one of my best horse, my, my first horse that I ever owned and uh -huh. that was after I was 30 years old. But then uh, five years ago he got EPM uh -huh. and he, he survived and he's still top dog in the pasture, but he's very uncoordinated and can't be ridden. So that was my favorite horse. Uh, the most important pressing issue, I think, is the unwanted horse issue and the fact that slaughterhouses were shut down, which has had an impact on the sure. industry as a whole. I have a, had a mule named Festus. Uh -huh. I had him for... Uh, 13 years. Had many, many good rides on him. Uh, he was a, a dapple gray. When I first got him, he was like seven or eight and loved to trot. Out in the pasture, instead of walking somewhere, he would trot. And you could tell when he was happy he was trotting uh, or feeling good. As he got older, he slowed down a little bit. but As know, we all do. Was, right, right, <laughs> right. Well, the most pressing issue, I would say, is that we have places to ride that the younger generation will have some place to ride and be able to enjoy going out on their horse and riding through the mountain, stuff like that. It, you know, that there's a place for them to go. They're educated on where they can go, where not to go, so we don't lose that right. So your favorite horse? That would be Snickers. Favorite She's horse. a breeding stock pain horse, and she belonged to a friend of mine, and he went away to college to come back to be a horse trainer. He got in an accident, and he's deceased, and his parents decided to sell these horses by bid. And I put a bid on her. I didn't have the highest bid. But his mother found all the paperwork and she gave it to me. And in the paperwork he said that if somebody had one of his horses, it would be me. And she's an awesome horse. Uh -huh. I mean, you could ride her downtown. You could take this mare anywhere. And she's 34 years old now. And I've totally retired her now. She's just an awesome all-around horse. Well, we'll do the favorite horse first. That sounds and, good. Uh, really are three, but I'll just pick out one. Uh, one was a horse I started with, one got started in the Appaloosa business, and one was a very successful Appaloosa horse in the show business. I'll pick the middle one of the two, a horse called Lenape Fox. Okay. And he came to me because no one else wanted him. He was really an outlaw kind of horse, and he and I just kind of got along really well. He eventually got sold at Syracuse, and the bidding stopped in the middle of the sale. I'll remember this forever. And I side-passed the horse from one end of the arena to the other end, and the bidding took off again. <laughs> he went on to be a world champion uh, jumper. Quite a nice horse, born in September. Always smaller than everything else in his classes when we haltered him, but a very successful show horse, owned by Gary and Janet Timester from New Jersey started me in the Appaloosa business. The most difficult thing, 
for Pennsylvania. The one that interests me the most is the unwanted horse issue. An ongoing lose-lose situation. There really is no satis no happy ending to any of it, but people need to be objective and understand it. We must become responsible horse owners and determine what the end of that life, that horse's life might be. And I believe that we should have the opportunity as an individual to select the end of that horse's life. <laughs> Someone else should not dictate it to us as many cases happens now. To me, to me, our biggest problem or our biggest challenge in the horse world industry is to get even the horse people themselves to understand that our horses are livestock. I, I think we lose a lot of thought as to the fact that it is still livestock. It is the only pet, if you want to call it a pet, that requires open land and requires someone to support it, the farming community to support it, it requires a lot. So I think we have to try to somehow get the pet owners that are that think their horses are pets to understand that it can be your pet. You can love them and let's hope you'll keep them till they don't need a home anymore and all those things, but they are still livestock. And my favorite horse, that's really easy because I had a big old Morgan Walker. Uh, when my husband and I got married, I had ridden horses as a kid, had had a pony and all the brat horses and all that. Um, but when my husband and I got married, we didn't have horses. Um, my father-in-law was in love with horses and just wanted a horse so bad. And so we went to a local auction and this big white was actually rather ugly, but he was a really nice horse. Uh, my father-in-law quickly said, if I bought that horse, Sharon, would you ride it? I said, you know me, Pap, I would ride anything. So he bought Sunny Boy. His name was Sunny Boy. He was a registered Morgan Walker and he was a handful. He was a four-year-old that knew little or nothing, but he and I grew to be great partners. He took me through places and I was young and naive and did all the stupid things that I would now never try, but he was trustworthy and he took me places that were amazing. And he was an amazing horse. I had him till he was 32 and then he just didn't need a place anymore. And so right. I had to put him down, but he, he's by far my favorite. I'll never be another son. I think the most pressing issue right now is the unwanted horse issue. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, has been kind of promulgated by the slaughter issue. And these are two things that, that actually do coincide. But, but in my area, the people are turning horses out. They're yeah. turning sick and debilitated horses out in the woods. And, I mean, it's a, sad, it's a sad situation. And then the horse rescues, the legitimate horse rescues, are overloaded. We need to do something. That's what I think is one of the prime issues right now. My favorite horse. Okay, I've had horses for 62 years. I shouldn't have said that because I'm going to tell you I got my first horse when I was 10. He was an American, five-gated American saddlebred. He was 15. I rode him everywhere. He had been a show horse. He'd been abused. I didn't know that. You know, it's fools and little children. Right. I rode him on the roads. I rode him everywhere. My friends and I, I even showed him, but I'd ride him to shows. And at age, my age, 37, he got to the point where he couldn't get up after he laid down. So we put him to sleep. However, he could see, he could hear, he was in good health, and he was 42 years old. So I guess he was one of my favorites, but I've had a lot since then. To me, the most, the biggest thing that's affecting the horse industry in Pennsylvania is the unwanted horse, doing away with the slaughter. So that's, to me, what's affecting the horse industry more severely than anything else in Pennsylvania. Everybody should have one in their life. I've had several, but probably the, the one that was the most impressive to me was a, an Arabian mare by the name of Lindell. She was my first Arab. I showed her. She I owned her, and then I showed her amateur owner and that, and she went on to make top 10 Western Pleasure Horse. Uh -huh. she, was a, she was a Polish bred Arab. That's, you know, she just, I rode her for 30 days and won the Western Pleasure Mare Class at Youngstown, Ohio. So that's the kind of mare she was. And uh, she then became a really super special brood mare. She raised me a lot of good babies and so forth. I was, at a, I was at a show, the first equine council in Ohio, and was sitting there as early for a meeting in Ohio. I was sitting there, getting ready for the meeting and drinking a cup of coffee, and this guy came in and sat down beside me, and we got to talking, and uh, he said, what, the, what kind of horses do you have? And I said, well, I, I don't have horses. I said, I have mules. <laughs> and uh, I said, but I grew up in the Arabian business. I showed and trained Arabians for a living. And uh, I said, now we have mules. And he said, that's a natural progression from Arabians to mules. <laughs> And it happened to be Dr. Robert Miller out of set. For me, the most pressing issue for the horse industry is the lack of understanding and lack of education for people horses. Mm -hmm. They don't get the big picture. Everything's micromanaged. You know, they're worried about their farm and their horse and if the horse rides properly or what about my saddle. If they don't look at the bigger picture, maybe of nutrition or maybe of where am I going to ride my horse mm -hmm. or even what laws and regulations will affect me as a horse owner because there's a lot of that now. Going on, and we have to keep on I guess my favorite horse 
was actually a pony. It was my first one. Because I wanted one so bad. My mother always said, your first word was horsey. And I she, and my parents were old. They were 36 and 46 when I were, was born. Uh-huh. So they grew up having used horses before there were cars. Blaze was my first Welsh, uh, Welsh Shetland pony. Uh-huh. And he was a staper. But he made me a rider. He was that little smart little cantankerous little pony. Yeah. And I think that was my favorite. Well, I think about three things that kind of are a combination of each other that, that I think think are very important and I think it's the uh, unwanted horse issue, the neglected horse issue and the, uh, although it's not necessarily in this state but it does affect this state in, in a couple of respects and that's the wild mustang issue. Your favorite horse and why? Well I would probably say that my favorite horse was goes back about 40 years ago. I got my, my first registered quarter horse and I had a great amount of fun with him. He, he, was, he was pretty well trained. We did a lot of fun things with him. I, I roped with him, and I did a number of other things. And I guess of all the horses that I've had, I have to say that that, that one was uh, probably my, f- my favorite. He was a horse that was very tactical. He was very easily trained. He right. really picked up sure. things quick. He, was, he, 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 liked, he liked to work. What was his name? Major. Okay, so now you've gotten everybody's opinions, the different points of view, and some great stories about some of their favorite horses. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. It was great to talk to some of the members of the Pennsylvania Equine Council. That is a great establishment here in Pennsylvania that really tries to bring together a lot of the different parts of the horse industry. And you saw that one of the topics that came up was that unity of the horse industry, something that I think is very important. I think we need to come together more and and try to solve some problems together a little bit more than separately. There were a lot of other important issues that got brought up there and hopefully you're a bit more familiar with some of those now. Uh, We'll see you next time.